to adopt the motion. Carried. Resuming debate on C-11 as amended, Senator Cormier. Merci, Monsieur le Président. Senator Cormier, thank you, Mr. Speaker. Colleagues, I rise today to speak in favor of third uh, F, passage at third reading of Bill C-11, the short title of which is the Online Streaming Act. I would like to point out that I'm speaking to you from lands that are part of the unceded traditional territory of the Algonquin Anishinaabe Nation. The purpose of Bill C-11 is clear, and it is important at this stage to reiterate it. Its objective is to bring online broadcasters, to bring online broadcasters rather within the scope of the Broadcasting Act so that they contribute to our Canadian broadcasting system and to enable the discoverability of Canadian content. While this objective can be summarized simply, you will no doubt agree that the complex issues involved go far beyond these few lines. Indeed, Bill C-1 is one of the first milestones for Canada in adapting its cultural policies to the digital age and gives us a taste of the magnitude of the challenge this entails. I would like to thank my fellow senators on the Standing Senate Committee on Transport and Communications for having shared their perspectives and questions throughout our study. It was a real sober second thought process that allowed us to address and explore many of the issues pertaining to this important bill and to propose some very relevant amendments. Not to mention the many witnesses who appeared before the committee or submitted briefs. Their passion and commitment to Bill C-11 is a testament to our democracy's vitality. Bien qu'il ne soit pas parfait, le projet de loi C-11 présente des gains importants pour notre écosystème culturel et la société canadienne. Le principal gain étant celui de l'équité qu'il crée entre les entreprises de radiodiffusion canadiennes dites traditionnelles et les entreprises de diffusion en ligne canadiennes et étrangères. Une autre avancée importante est qu'il actualise la façon dont la diversité canadienne... Donc, euh, il y a problème... Oh. Can I try that again? Shall we? The interpretation should work now. I think that interpretation is working now. However, thank you very much. So I'll. Uh, repeat. Uh, another important advance is the way it updates in which Canadian diversity and what it represents are identified and addressed by the Canadian broadcasting system. As for equity and diversity, I will note some technical points in the bill that support and highlight amendments adopted by the committee. The broadcasting policy as that the Canadian broadcasting system will now include foreign broadcasting undertakings, including online undertakings that provide programming to Canadians, and that these undertakings will be required to contribute to the implementation of the objectives of the broadcasting policy for Canada. Equating Canadian and foreign undertakings in their contributions to the Canadian broadcasting system was questioned by more than one witness in our study. Similar reactions were also observed with respect to the exception that could include social media in the broadcasting system. In response to this last concern, Senator Simons and Mivit Deschain proposed an important amendment. That said, it is important to remember, colleagues, that the Broadcasting Act provides a framework for the CRTC to regulate and monitor the industry, and that a framework that is too precise could prevent it from evolving with new technologies, for example. It is also important to keep in mind that the CRTC can exercise its power over platforms, not individuals. In addition, the CRTC's expertise and the consultations it will conduct prior to the implementation of Bill C-11 will allow it to modulate the obligations of each type of business. Indeed, in exercising its regulatory and supervisory powers, the CRTC must, and I quote section 5, bracket 2, bracket 8.1, takes into account the nature and diversity of the services provided by broadcasting undertakings as well as their size, their impact on the Canadian creation and production industry, particularly with respect to employment in Canada and Canadian programming, their contribution to the implementation of the broadcasting policy, 
and any other characteristic that may be relevant in the circumstances, end of quote. This is to say that a small emerging independent online platform would likely not be subject to regulation while a large platform with a large share of the Canadian market would. While we applaud the significant advances in this bill in terms of equity, we must admit that this equity is far from perfect. Sections 31F and 31F.1, which deal with the use of Canadian human resources and the creation of Canadian programming, impose a less stringent test on foreign, foreign firms. This is the only place where the bill treats these two types of businesses differently in this manner. In its brief testimony, testimony to the committee. The Coalition for the Diversity of Cultural Expressions, representing 50 cultural organizations across the country, warned of the dangers of the two-tiered regime, regime created by these two sections. These sections send a message to the CRTC that it is acceptable to reduce the requirements for foreign companies to use Canadian talent, thereby undermining the primary objective of the bill. This concern was on my mind throughout the committee process, and that is why I introduced an amendment that provides a solution by standardizing the human resources utilization test while allowing the CRTC flexibility in its applicability. Unfortunately, this amendment was not retained by the committee, and I will not be reintroducing it at third reading. However, I would like to share with you, my colleagues, this element of the bill, which raises a lot of concern in the industry about its possible impact in the future. On another note, thanks to the testimony from Union des Artistes, the Alliance of Canadian Cinema, Television and Radio Artists, artists and several others, the committee's study identified a serious inequity in Section 31.1 of the bill, which made the status of the Art Artist Act inapplicable to online businesses. This provision could have had a disastrous impact on the working conditions of artists, artists hired by online distribution platforms, and could have had a negative impact on existing agreements. Fortunately, an amendment was passed in committee to address the profound imbalance that such a provision would have presented for Canadian artists. I thank my fellow senators for their support in introducing this amendment. Another important gain of Bill C-11 is that it updates the way in which Canadian diversity and its representativeness are identified and addressed in the Canadian broadcasting system. Here are some examples. As has been mentioned by other colleagues, the bill recognizes for the first time that Indigenous programming reflecting Indigenous cultures and languages will have to be provided by broadcasting undertakings operated by Indigenous people. This principle is inspired by Article 16 of the UN Declaration on Indigenous Peoples. I thank Senator Clément for her amendments, which have improved the text of the bill with respect to better, better recognition of Indigenous peoples and languages. A second example is the recognition of communities that represent diversity by their sexual orientation, gender identity or expression, in that the broadcasting system shall, through its programming and employment opportunities, respond to their needs, interests and reflect their conditions and aspirations. Another example, the presence of provisions that establish that the Canadian broadcasting system must take into account the needs and interests of black and other racialized communities, including support for their productions. Finally, C-11 adds important provisions for official language minority communities. I applaud the fact that the CRT will now be required to consult official language minority communities when making any decision that may have an, an, an adverse impact on them based on certain criteria set out in the Act. This provision is crucial, colleagues, for official language minority communities, as the Fédération culturelle canadienne française, the Alliance des producteurs francophones du Canada, the Quebec English Language Production Council, and the Alliance nationale de l'industrie musicale pointed out at committee. It was in listening to these and other testimonies, including that of Monica Auer, D Executive Director of the Forum for Research and Policy and Communications, that the committee heard broader concerns about the CRTC's relationship with civil society and the transparency of its powers. The committee 
has taken this need for transparency into account by adopting my proposed amendment, which extends public hearings to the making of CRTC orders and regulations unless it is determined not to be in the public interest to do so. While positive, this amendment falls far short of addressing the issue. Better processes to ensure transparency and accountability of CRTC decisions will remain important concerns in the future. The issues associated with intellectual property and the concept of Canadian content were widely discussed during our committee study. The concept of Canadian content definition in its current form was sharply criticized as a risk to foreign investment. With her expertise in Canadian programming, the President and CEO of the Canada Media Fund, Valerie Creighton, had this to say to the committee, and I quote, if we continue to consider foreign service production as totally Canadian, all of the IP is owned by foreign companies and the revenue owned in the majority by the production goes outside the country. Our producers and content creators here become a service industry to foreign companies. It's a balance that has to be found. It's not one or the other, end of quote. In the spirit of Ms. Creighton's assertion, it is vital to reiterate that both the notion of foreign investment, along with a rigorous definition of Canadian content, are not mutually exclusive, colleagues. It is imperative that our Canadian creators retain ownership of their intellectual property. This concept will be central in revising the definition of Canadian content, which will take place in the form of a regulation and will require careful and considered review by the CRTC. In this regard, we should also pay close attention to the direction <laughs> that the Governor in Council will issue to the CRTC upon passage of Bill C-11. In conclusion, in conclusion, dear colleagues, I would say that beyond the specific issues raised and the amendments proposed, the study of Bill C-11 raises fundamental questions about our perception of Canadian culture and the role of the Canadian state in supporting and promoting it. For some, arts and cultures seem to be equated with mere consumer products. Consequently, they essentially treat the relationship between the citizenship, the citizen and culture as a relationship between the consumer and product. The law of free market is the only one that seems to prevail. For others, and I am one of them, artists and their creations must be treated as tangible manifestations of a dynamic dialogue between the citizen and their works. And this is true both on our stages, galleries, bookstores and cinemas, and on online platforms. And this is principally how I examined this bill. If we truly want to respect audiences, colleagues, we must encourage them to discover new works. It is wrong to think that only by giving the public what they want will we achieve our cultural policy goals. There is a balance to be struck. Faced with an artistic work, whether offered live, broadcast, or virtual, the audience is not passive. Quite the contrary. The presentation is the beginning of a civic process and of interactions that actively participate in our democracy. The public has the right to access new works, and the Canadian state has the duty and responsibility to promote this accessibility. I applaud the success of online content creators who have reached their audiences, and I commend them for their creativity. However, not all creators are successful. Bill C-11 seeks to further support Canadian creators and the dissemination of their work in the digital world. And this is an important step for our cultural policies. If Canada has so many artists today, talented artists, if their work shines so brightly internationally, contributing to increase the impact of Canada in the world, it is not only because of their talent. Canadian artists are successful, both here and internationally, thanks to their talent, of course, but also thanks to the Canadian state and the regulations that govern access to and distribution of their work. This is not censorship or an ideology, it is support. Today, with Bill C-11, we recognize and applaud the contribution of foreign online broadcasters to our broadcasting system. That said, since these companies are in our territory and benefit from the talent of our Canadian creators, they must play by our rules. Our culture, cultural sovereignty is at stake. 
In other words, if you come to our rink and recruit our best players like Gino Ajik, then you play by our rules, period. Allow me to conclude this speech, colleagues, by quoting our former colleague, the remarkable Acadian artist, Viola Léger, who left us recently. In her last speech in this chamber, she said, and I quote, Canadian culture is the product of the union of different cultures and traditions, each as rich as the next. Our distinctive features are enriched by the contribution of Indigenous cultures and other cultural traditions that have been added gradually. Our way of life is Western, North American, and at the same time, Indigenous, Ukrainian, Pakistani, Senegalese, Acadian, Irish, and others. We are a northern country of extreme cold and many seasons. Our intellectual milieu draws its strength from the extraordinary synergy of men and women who come from everywhere to take part in the great collective project that is Canada. Uniformity is not our hallmark. We are diversity itself, but what we have in common is our commitment to our values, which are an important dimension of our culture, end quote. Colleagues, knowing that the passage of this bill will only begin the conversation that our chamber must have on culture, and that is good news, I urge you to pass C-11 so that Canadian creators can continue to shine on our screens and so that foreign online platforms, platforms accessing our territory are aware of the immeasurable good fortune they have in being able to count on talented, hardworking Canadian artists. Thank you. On debate, Senator Housakis. Thank you, Madam Speaker. 